So our speaker is a physician, a scientist with a 10 years experience, international experience in clinical research and vaccine development. And this is in several continents, Asia Pacific, Europe, Latin America, and Africa. He is also a global medical director for the Takeda's Vaccine Business Unit. He's a TED educator and also a digital health expert for WHO. He graduated from the University of the Philippines College of Medicine. Then he moved to Singapore and he has several postgraduate studies in vaccinology, infectious diseases, tropical medicine, public health, and this is all over the world, in Siena, Italy, London, Leeds, and Harvard Kennedy School, among others. Uh, our speaker is a fellow of the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine, the Royal Society of Public Health, and a fellow of the Royal Society of the Arts. Ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce to you Dr. Melvin Sanikas. Good afternoon. Hi, Dr. Dr. Melvin. Hi, Dr. June. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you see my okay. slides? I think we're waiting for you to be shared. Okay. I am sharing it now. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, I think uh, we're starting to see it now. Okay, great. So first of all, uh, thank you. Young Doctors Philippines Organizing Committee, Ms. Kathleen, Doc Anna, for the invitation. Um, I hope everyone is as well as can be. I hope everyone is safe, given that uh, 2020 has been a, a roller coaster year for all of us. Um, so when people ask me what I'm doing, I typically say either uh, vaccinology or infectious diseases or global health. Since these three are actually related, I, I'm working on vaccines for infectious diseases um, of global health importance. So there is no blueprint or template for a career in global health. Let me just say that up front. But in the next 20 or 25 minutes or so, I will um, be talking about how I ended up doing what I'm doing at the moment. Um, and hopefully my, my journey gives you some ideas of the things that you can do as an MD. Uh, and if there's one slide that I hope you will remember uh, among all the slides I will be showing, I hope that this is it. So um, firstly, it's very important to know yourself. The only person who travels with you throughout life is, is you. So if you truly know yourself, you will be able to make decisions that are good for you, decisions that you really want. And this is a, is a lifelong journey, you know, knowing yourself. Um, but I highly recommend, recommend that you spend time on this and really to get to know the things that you like. So for me, I know that I don't like things. I don't like shopping for things. I like to travel. I love experiences. Um, I love to eat. I don't like doing the same things over and over again. I get bored easily. Uh, I like to constantly learn new things. I like to learn languages, for example. So, so these things, you, you have to be able to identify them so that you can truly make decisions that are good for you. And then the second concept that I want you all to know or remember is this concept of ikigai it's a, a japanese concept of um, basically it's a it's a if you if you make a venn diagram it's a in the center of doing what you love doing what the world needs doing what you can be paid for and doing what you're good at and of course um, it takes time to to know this but Really, it's important to know yourself and know the things that you can actually do, that, that you love, that the world needs, and that you can be paid for. So um, my journey started in 2006. So after I finished um, medicine at the UP College of Medicine, of course, 
the usual track is anong, anong gusto mong specialization, di ba? Saan ka magsa-specialize? Um, I, I really wanted to do something else. Um, so I tried my luck in the Philippines. Uh, I applied to different organizations, NGOs, DOH, WHO Philippines. And um, unfortunately, I was not lucky enough to get anything. So I was rejected many, many times. And, and then that's why I decided na siguro the, the route for me in my career is a um, something overseas. So then I decided to do uh, um, my US MLE. Pero sabi ko, um, since I've finished medicine na ayokong maging uh, pabigat sa magulang ko, I don't want to ask for money. So I said I will work for a while para um, panggasto sa US MLE. So I went I, look, I was I went looking for a job and um, fortunately I I was able to land a job in in Singapore and uh, I was working for the Health Sciences Authority so it's a it's a statutory board of the Ministry of Health um, and uh, the good thing about this uh, job is it's really introduced me to things that we never learned in med school. Kasi this is doing um, regulation of medical products, vaccines, and devices. So it's the equivalent of our FDA, no? the Philippine FDA. And there I was a medical reviewer um, and a clinical regulatory scientist. So basically you review the data of all the drugs and vaccines and biologics coming into Singapore. And you recommend whether it's... Um, it's good to be approved or not, or it needs more data, you know, so on and so forth. And also, I was lucky in this team because I was in a team where I was the youngest, and um, lahat ng mga kasama ko sa work, they have um, families or they're they they're not interested na to to go overseas for training. In to Singapore, kasi if you work for the government, most of the time you get opportunities for training overseas. And then, um, laging ako yun kasi yung mga kasamaan ko sa trabaho, they had families, di ba? So I was able to go to Charité in Berlin uh, where I did uh, a month training in uh, pharmacology. So I studied uh, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of drugs, uh, drug-drug interactions. And then I was also um, given the chance to um, study infectious diseases at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and health economics at Aberdeen. And this is me uh, in Berlin in 2007. And uh, in 2009, I thought I wanted to explore um, what is it outside, di ba, sa private industry. So from the government side, I joined a small uh specialty pharma called V4 Pharma. It's actually a Swiss uh, pharma, but um, I joined their regional affiliate based in Singapore. But because it's new and uh, they needed me to do training, they sent me to, to Switzerland, um, actually here in Zurich where I am now. They sent me here for three months to learn um, basically everything about the, the company and the, and the products. And uh, I was also given a chance to uh, study um, patient safety and clinical risk management at uh, University of Leeds. And this is me uh, getting my degree. And I uh, like this photo because it looks like I'm um, in, in, in the movie Harry Potter. Diba? Parang I'm, I was getting my certificate from a professor, from a professor in, in, in Hogwarts. <laughs> and... Um, in 2000, so, so during that time, I had a good job. Um, I was paid well, um, but then I thought to myself, maybe I'm still young. I, I need to explore and uh, see the world. So I applied to this program. It's an infectious disease and immunology program. Um, twin program from the University of Basel in Switzerland and the National University of Singapore. Um, I submitted my application and um, unfortunately, I uh, submitted just a few hours before the deadline. So I did not get in. But the next day, I got an email from 
um, the search committee, they told me that there's another program, similar program, but in Italy. So what I did was, kinuha ko lang sinabmit ko na documents at sinabmit ko lang dun sa other program in Italy. I also applied to a program in Hamburg. It's also infectious disease and immunology. Because during this time, I said, it's really good to know yourself. During this time, I, I already had this idea that I want to do something related to infectious diseases and immunology. So I applied to a program in, Ham in, in Hamburg, in, in Germany, and I also got accepted. But then I, I was looking for a sign. Should I go to Germany or should I go to Italy? And then, you know, um, I, I thought, Okay, both countries are okay, diba? I, I will learn a lot. I will learn a new language. Um, they have very good football teams. And uh, the decision actually um, was for me to go to Italy because of movies. <laughs> so it sounds funny, but it's because of the movies that I've watched that I decided to go to Italy. So <laughs> these are the movies. So, you know, Letters to Juliet. Um, <laughs> Um, Twilight, um, this one is uh, Quantum of Solace uh, with uh, Daniel Craig, uh, James Bond, and of course, Under the Tuscan Sun. So all these movies showed me the beauty of Tuscany and the beauty of Sien Sien Siena. So I decided to go to Siena. So this program um, is vaccinology and pharmaceutical clinical development. I was lucky enough to be in a cohort where um, I had very good professors from academia, from the industry, and I was in a cohort with the people from um, Vietnam, from Indonesia, uh, from Mali in Africa, from uh, Tanzania, Nigeria. And uh, I also had one Filipino classmate, actually. Um, so this is our group. Um, this guy is uh, Dr. Ralph Clemens. He is uh, a very, very important figure in vaccine development industry. And this guy below is uh, Stanley Plotkin. So if you remember the, the vaccine book, he is, you know, when you say, Sana yung Plotkins ko? Shayan. This is uh, Stanley Plotkin. And this is our graduation day where we were wearing this uh, funny red uh, hat. Actually, this is. Uh, patterned from this, you know, yung nung time ng plague, uh, the infectious disease doctors were wearing this because they thought that this would actually scare um, the pathogen. And uh, that is why we are wearing this because if you graduate from the College of Medicine um, and the School of Medicine, you are supposed to wear this. Um, and uh, so... After this is actually the point where I became a vaccinologist, right? Because this is when I finished uh, vaccinology, and then I wanted to stay in Italy, but uh, it was not easy to find a job if you're not Italian, because uh, their economy was not doing well, and of course they were pri um, prioritizing their local citizens, and so I went back to Singapore because Singapore is like my pit stop. Um, uh, but before that. Just to introduce to you what vaccinology is. So vaccinology is a, a very interesting field. It's not new. It's it's existed for for over decades now. I mean, it started with Louis Pasteur, you know, with uh, Robert Koch, but then um, it's a it's a field which combines public health, infectious diseases, epidemiology, immunology, clinical development, and microbiology. And if you're doing anything that's related to this. Um, for human or animal vaccines, or even plant vaccines, you are actually doing vaccinology. So, um, yeah, I said I went back to Singapore. I worked for GlaxoSmithKline Biologicals um, for their vaccine uh, division. And um, I was um, supporting not only Singapore, but also Malaysia and Brunei, because usually these three countries are considered a group uh, for most uh, private uh, firms, but I was also fortunate enough to be able to go to South Africa and present my research on influenza and also to go to um, Sweden to attend the summer school uh, of the European Society for Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases. And um, 
again here i was happy i was doing what i love you know it's it's vaccines it's it's basically ikigai right i was doing things that uh, something that i was good at something that i love something that the world needs and something that i can be paid for okay and right but then i got a a letter an invitation to um for an interview sa sa gates foundation so to work for um bill and melinda gates and uh, of course the decision then was should i go kasi happy naman ako dito I, i'm okay or should i go to an, another adventure diba so i i just came back from an adventure in italy do i really want to go to another adventure but then again you know the importance of knowing yourself um i i i knew that if i didn't go for this i will regret it for the rest of my life so and especially this quote from from Steve Jobs they buy your time is limited so don't waste it living someone else's life and um he also mentioned that your work is going to um what you do is going to take up a lot of your time so make sure that you don't settle look for something that you really like to do and and so ironically this quote from Steve Jobs convinced me to work for for Bill Gates um and so i moved in 2015 to to seattle in washington this is not the washington dc capital but the washington state yung malapit sa canada um in in there i was fortunate to um work with uh, bill so this is bill and this these are the other global health fellows um and uh, at the bill and melinda gates foundation i had the opportunity to do many many things Um, I mean, you just have to have your ideas, and funding is not an issue, as long as you can um, rationalize why you need the funds and what you want to do. Um, at the Gates Foundation, funding is not an issue. It's always like have an idea and and tell us how you want the idea to be um, operationalized, and if you can explain these things, the funding will come. So. Really, it's 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 one of the best roles I've ever had. Really intellectually stimulating, science, operation, and practicality combined, deba. Right? And also there at the Gates Foundation, I worked a lot in China um, because I was part of the tuberculosis team. And as you can see here, I'm this is in Beijing um, at the Chest Hospital. I also work in Wuhan before Wuhan became famous in the news. I worked a lot in in the labs in Wuhan. And this is me in uh, in South Africa. We were working with uh, the NGOs in Africa working to fight um stigma, the basa tuberculosis patients. And then I also had the opportunity to work at the San Francisco um Curry International Tuberculosis Center so I had my TB and HIV fellowship there um and this is me attending uh so this is my ID at the WHO so I was part of the TB research investment case um meeting and so this is for me the the crowning moment of my career at the Gates Foundation so I I started the collaboration for TB vaccine discovery and this is me surrounded by the best scientists in tb immunology vaccines and um, pat- host pathogen interaction so th- the scientists are from all over the world from from europe from america from from asia from latin america and i also had a chance to to go here to the university of cape town as a as a lecturer um And then in 2017 I went back again to Singapore. I worked for Sanofi Pasteur. I was the regional medical director for influenza and uh, meningitis vaccines. So this again was an opportunity for me to travel a lot in the region because I was in charge of um, 17 countries. So if you look at the map um India here and Australia here so it includes all the countries in between India and Australia except China because China is considered a its own region and this is me giving a lecture at the um drug information association meeting um this is me in 
Hanoi at the Fondacion Meru Vaccinology course. And this is me continuing my um, Harvard Kennedy School um, public leadership executive education. So I started this when I was at the Gates Foundation and um, I was continuing it every year um, until I finished uh, this year actually. So I also had a chance to be a, um, a lecturer and an internship, internship supervisor at the um, NUS School for Public Health. So it was very interesting to, to have that opportunity to, um, to mentor uh, younger scientists. And then this is me uh, giving a lecture in Ho Chi Minh. Uh, in this health economics workshop. And this is me in South Korea. Um, so if you guys know the um, baby shark, so it was created by a company, a group called Pink Fong, and we worked with them to create a, uh, an influenza awareness um, video. So this is me uh, in Seoul, in South Korea, launching this video to to parents, to doctors, actually, they're using this in their clinics to show the importance of uh, getting your flu vaccine. So this is a summary of, of, of what I've done in, in, in the past uh, decade or so. So again, starting from Singapore uh, and then to Italy and then Singapore again to the US, Singapore again. And now I am in in Switzerland. So uh, as mentioned by Doc Jun, I am working as a, a medical director in Takeda um, vaccines. So we are developing several vaccines. Uh, and uh, the good thing about what I've done so far is because I have learned some unique uh, skills and have some ex unique experiences, I get to work in the industry and also work with um, the WHO, for example, um, and other nonprofits and other scientific organizations, like for example, this Vaccine Safety Net is a is a group that's under the WHO, but I work with them um, uh, with on several projects, and I also work with TED. So these are some of the videos that I've worked on um, so far during the pandemic. Um, how fast a vaccine can be made when a pandemic is over, um, how do ventilators work. These are some of the, um, the videos that I've worked um, as a scientific consultant for, for TED. And uh, so learning never stops. Um, I really wanted to study something else before the pandemic. And when the pandemic happened, it actually just pushed me to to go for it. So I am now studying business management in University of Leicester. I'm supposed I was supposed to go there two months ago for for face to face sessions, but of course because of uh, COVID, hindi na tadonyare. And I just recently was accepted to a an immunology program at the University of Zaragoza in Spain. And and actually the reason why I, I chose Spain is because I wanted to improve my Spanish. So I, I'm putting things together basically. So I think this is my last slide. Again, to remind everyone that knowing yourself is really the beginning of, uh, of all wisdom and it's really, really important. And um, the other cartoon here is just showing you that the next time you get rejected from a job, remember that life is, is abundant and full of opportunity and keep going. Because I can tell you the number of rejections I've had in, in, in this in my career, hundreds, literally hundreds of rejections, and it's fine. I mean, what personal in it? It's okay to be rejected. Just be sad and move on. So, thank you for for listening. Uh, that's my talk. Happy to answer questions. public health. Uh, I guess the first question I wanted to ask, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who wanted to also ask you this question. Uh, in order to go into vaccinology, do you have any, do you need to have any specific training? My understanding in your case is 
uh, working in Singapore afforded you all those opportunities to undergo yes. all these postgraduate trainings and courses that kind of molded your, you know, your knowledge and pushing you into infectious diseases and vaccinology. So if we were to advise, you know, one of our mm -hmm. young medical doctors here who's interested to go into vaccinology, but, you know, they're going to be based in the Philippines. And you said there's really no blueprint, right, to go yes, into sir. being a vaccinologist. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend them? I guess you have to do internal medicine, infectious disease, and then you have master's in public health. So what will you advise these young doctors so, if they want to go into vaccinology? So what I can say, uh, Doc Jun, is there are at least maybe four or five paths for that. So I think first is you can be a pediatrician because you know pediatricians use a lot of vaccines. And then from that, you can... You can maybe join a pharma or a research institute. That's one. You can be an infectious disease. So I am infectious disease or put it in I am immunology. And then you can join pharma again or biotech. The other um, pathway would be um, to study uh, a degree in vaccinology because there are some degrees in vaccinology now. So for example, like the one I did in Italy, there's also one in France, there's also one in the U.S., there's also one in Canada, there's also one here in Switzerland. So there are several paths, basically. Uh, but the important thing is you, you need to have um, experience in maybe uh, using the vaccine or maybe um, developing the vaccine or, or maybe experience in epidemiology or um, experience in immunology. Um, these can be your stepping stones to um, develop that career. Okay, so if you are based in the Philippines, you either have to be like, a you go to traditional medical residency training or maybe join a pharmaceutical company and be in that particular um, arm. Puede rin, sir. Puede rin, uh, you can join a pharma company, pero I think um, the chances of you uh, being hired by the company kung wala ka pang other experience is lower. Mm -hmm. But if you have other experiences, for example, even community medicine, right? If you have experience in, and let's say, um, being an um, immunization manager, immunization program manager in a particular um, town or, or province, then you will have um, um, special knowledge on immunization. Right? So it's higher chances for you to be hired by a pharma or by a research institute. So um, I, I think um, you can also do an MPH because a master's in public health would be very useful also the knowledge that you, you have diba, from the MPH. So like, like I said, um, depend on the circumstances, more, depend on the opportunities, and there's no blueprint. But just make sure that whatever you're doing, uh, yung, yung mga experiences more, is related. Yeah, I think there is a question here from the audience. I think they're curious. Uh, bakit daw naka jacket ka? How cold is it in Zurich right now, Dr. Melvin? Yeah. Let me check. Huh? Temperature in Zurich now is ah, 7 degrees Celsius. Wow. Okay. How about during the morning when you wake up? What is the wow. temperature? <laughs> Kanina, I think mga 5 or 4. <laughs> wow. So I think there is a question uh, here. Doc Melvin, you travel a lot. What is your favorite uh, place to work uh, or as, as a, a tourist? Tour. Okay, so um, yes, I, I did travel a lot, especially in my past roles as Sanofi Pastor because I was covering 17 countries. And there was a time even uh, I, I lived in Singapore, but I was only in Singapore for two days. Because I was just really traveling, right? Mm. But that was Singapore, papatang ko lang yung luggage ko, tas lipad na naman ulit. But now I'm not doing that. I, I travel very rarely. I travel more for 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 pleasure, let's say. And the question mm. about um, my favorite country to work in, Italy. Italy, really. It's just you know la dolce vita. Just, the life is just so amazing in Italy. It's, it's it's an easy life. It's a beautiful country with beautiful people, with nice food, and just for me, it's 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 the best. Okay, I agree with you that Italy is probably one of the best countries that I've been to. Yes. So there's a, another question here. 
how fluent in the respective languages in the foreign countries do you have to be in order to be comfortably working there? I think you did mention it to me before. Yes. So maybe so, share it um, with our audience. So, so, so Italy, before we were seeing patients, because we also had um, a time where we had to work in the hospital, in the OPD, in, in the wards. So, I mean, you had to learn Italian. So my Italian is okay. So... <laughs> I'm not very good, but I can speak to patients. I can explain things, you know. Um, yeah. So you have so, to be at least uh, conversational. Right. Especially when you have to see patients too. Yes, yes. So uh, how many languages are you now comfortable in speaking considering the number of countries you've been to? <laughs> okay. Okay. So siempre um, Ilongo. Because I'm, I'm Ilongo. Uh -huh. I'm from Poland. Right? Um, Malay, Bahasa Malay, mm -hmm. because um, Singapore. I, speak, I speak to my dad sometimes in Bahasa Malay. Um, of course, English, uh, Italian, Spanish, German. Yeah, that's it. Um, those are the languages where I can, where I am conversational. I mean, there are others okay. that I know words. Yeah. Okay. Ito naman, I think everyone wants to know. Please tell us po, malapit na ba po yung COVID vaccine? What's causing the delay? Well, okay, to put things in perspective, no, in, in, in a non-pandemic situation, vaccines take a long time, really, like 10 to 15 years, 5 to 10 years. Basically, 10 years, I think, is, is, a, is, a, good, is a good estimate. And now we're just in the ninth or eighth month of the pandemic, and we have really advanced significantly. So, but what I can say is, realistically, we don't expect it this year. I don't think we can expect a vaccine this year. We will probably see the results coming in, maybe end of the year or early next year. And then once we see the results, we will be able to um, estimate kung kailan talaga siya ma magagawa. Kasi syempre, when you, when you have a, a working vaccine, kailangan pa yan i-mass produce, di ba? So the manufacturers mm -hmm. need to um, find a way to manufacture them in, in bulk. And again, so you also need um, to transport them to the different countries and to sort of uh, distribute them to the people. So uh, I, I would think that um, middle of 2021 or end of 2021. Yeah, I think that's probably what the expectations of mga doctors say. Yes. Eh. yes. So what is your, who's your bet uh, who's probably going to beat the race? Uh, uh, Russia, China, UK, or US, or some other country? It depends, Doc June, kasi iba-ibang modalities ang ginagamit. Eh. So if, you, if we assume that this DNA RNA vaccines actually work, which we still don't know, by the way, I mean, mm -hmm. we see that it looks good in animals in the phase one, phase two studies. And people always say, oh, it looks good in monkeys, da da da. But in, in, mm -hmm. in drug development, we have this saying that uh, uh, mice lie, monkeys exaggerate, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. ferrets are weasels. So we really don't know until we see the data as a human. So I hope the RNA vaccines work. Um, but if you look at um, track record, siempre yung mga mga inactivated vaccines, protein vaccines that we already have in the market. Sila yung may track record, di ba? So we have experience mm -hmm. with them and we expect them to work, hopefully. Okay. There's a question here. Uh, since you've worked in Singapore, you've worked in Europe, you've worked in the U.S., did you actually experience any discrimination just because you are a Filipino in any of those countries you mentioned? Yes, for sure. So, mm -hmm. hindi, naman, hindi naman discrimination na kunya. Ay, wag ka dito dahil Pilipino ka. Um, you will see this in subtle ways. For example, maybe in, in, in the workplace, di ba? Maybe, um, for example, let's say in the US, if, if you are saying an idea, people don't necessarily believe you. You have to explain yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to... You, you have to defend that. But if it's, let's say, uh, uh, an old white man who says it, everyone says, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, these subtle things, hindi naman yung tipong, umalis ka dito dahil pinoy ka. Hindi naman ganun mm -hmm. so far. 
I, uh, I think the next question, you partially answered this one. How is the COVID-19 vaccine race? Uh, meron na bang malapit sa finish line? You want to add something? I think you yes, kind yes, of doctor. elaborated on this earlier. I think when you say meron na bang malapit sa finish line, of course, we expect those that are in phase three now, sila yung pinakamalapit sa finish line, di ba? But the question is, um, are they uh, able to recruit as fast as expected? Kasi for example, yung J&J vaccine, they needed 60,000 subjects. I mean, you can't force people to be part of the study, di ba? So you wait for people really to come and say, yes, I want to be part of the study. So it's not just the vaccine itself, but it's also how fast you recruit people and also the transmission of the disease. Kasi, let's say, sa China, hindi na sila makagawa ng phase 3 doon kasi hindi na nagtatransmit yung, yung, yung virus. So main factors uh, should be considered. But to answer the question is, I would say, yung nasa phase 3 na ngayon, sila yung we expect na malapit if walang the, untoward uh, adverse events. And those are the vaccines from UK and US, right? Yeah. Yes. To phase three. And what do you think of the Russian, you know, vaccine? They're trying mm. to recruit Filipinos here to be volunteers for uh, up, their upcoming phase three clinical trial. So, Doc June, I think if... If they've submitted the data to our FDA and if our scientists have reviewed and think na, um, it, it's okay, why not, right? As long as it's given in a setting where the people are monitored closely mm-hmm. and that if possible adverse events happen, they, they, they can get medical attention. Okay, very good. Uh, may, may question ako sa'yo. Uh, okay, let me tweet this one. What's happening po sa Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? We hear they give grants. What else pa po do they do? So, um, yung Gates Foundation, actually, they have uh, three um, divisions. Yung Global Health, Global Development, and the U.S. programs. So, sa U.S. programs, they focus on education. Sa U.S., you know, um, giving, uh, improving education. Uh, the schools, for example, giving them grants to improve um, the way they, they teach, uh, give them grants to improve um, access to education. That's the U.S. programs. Um, young Global Development, it's helping farmers, for example, or fishermen in, in Africa or in, in poorer countries to improve their livelihoods. Um, in Global Health, so you have TB, HIV, um, neglected, neglected tropical diseases, NTDs, um, pneumococcal diseases, diarrhea. So it's um, looking at ways to improve how drugs, vaccines, and diagnostics are, are used or are improving access. So they work on different things, but all of these things that they work on have a common theme because the motto of Gates Foundation is all lives have equal values. So um, they are trying to make um, the world a more equitable uh, place to live in. Okay. Uh, I have a question here. Because uh, when I was looking at the world uh, information from the beginning during the pandemic, so there were more cases in Switzerland than in the Philippines. I think when, mm-hmm. when Switzerland was having 30,000 cases, Nasa 15 or 20,000 pa lang yung Philippines eh. And yes, now yes. Uh, we start. have 300,000 and we have the longest lockdown in the world and hindi man lang nag-lockdown sa Switzerland. So what do you think you guys were doing right that we were not doing right despite the lockdown? So um, yes, I, I, I think um, many things kasi ang Switzerland, we, we are neighbors with Italy, di ba? And during... In, in, mm-hmm. February and March, Italy had the worst situation in the world. And uh, mm-hmm. of course, we were all saying, oh, kawawa naman yung Italy, blah, blah, blah. And, and for us here, um, the government was actually not very strict, but it's the, it's the mindset of the people. Na, um, when, when, when the government said, you know, stay at home, work from home, yeah, people really worked from home. And uh, when they said, wear mask. In general, for the most part, you can see really people wearing masks. So, I mean, I think it's a combination of um, the support of the government, um, 
the people as well. Kasi, di ba sa atin, sinasabi lagi, mahirap ang lockdown kasi paano na kami kikita, paano na kami makabenta, which is true, di ba? Kasi, I mean, if people are not able to earn their living, <laughs> hindi ka mamamatay sa COVID, mamamatay ka sa gutom, di ba? Which is true. Mm-hmm. And here in Switzerland, I was speaking to my barber at least kasi nung April lang bukas na, sabi niya sa akin, for, for them daw, mga barbers, they were given money by the government na since nasarado yung barbershop, It's not a lot, but they were given money for mm-hmm. them to survive this period na wala silang kita. Mm-hmm. And I think we didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, next question here from one of our online uh, doctors. What, what is for a digital ambassador or a health advisor in WHO? Okay. So WHO recently, in 2019, they created this uh, digital health uh, group. Um, I'm part of the technical advisors there. So we look at um, digital solutions. So marami, di ba? Pwedeng awareness, pwedeng tracking of uh, sickness, pwedeng contact tracing um, applications. So anything that has to do with uh, digital technology that can be applied to improve health. And of course, we know that the different countries are in different levels of experience and resources when it comes to digital health. So we take this into consideration. For example, sa sabi natin na um, in countries where there is no internet connection, the the applications that you use need to be able to answer that issue, di ba? Na kunyari, data can be stored in the phone muna kung wala pang internet and when there's internet na, pwede na mag-send ng data. Yung mga ganong things. So we think about mm. solutions for... Um, to improve health using the digital technology. Great. So there is a question here from Sean Tan. I think this was partially answered, but you should probably give additional input. What is your opinion about the phase three clinical trials here in the Philippines on November? Are these Russian and Chinese vaccines reliable and safe? So um, for me, whether it's Russian or Chinese or kahit saan pa, you have to look at the data. Diba? And um, yung trabaho ko before sa, sa Singapore was really like this, looking at the data. And if we need more data, we say, hey, manufacturer, give us more data. Diba? And mm-hmm. if with the data available, we cannot say that, then we also say, hey, manufacturer, you are not uh, giving us enough. So we will say no to this. And I, I trust the scientists at the FDA that they're doing this. And I think my understanding is uh, they already reviewed yata yung protocols and I think uh, they thought it was safe. So I, I guess yeah. baka mangyayari nga magkakaroon ng recruits dito na Filipinos. Yes. Uh, yes may question dito sa comments and I think uh, it is also related to the earlier question. Sabi niya na uh, what's a phase 3 po sa vaccine? So I guess we've been talking about phase 3 mm-hmm. clinical trials but meron ho tayo mga viewers na they're not sure what is a phase 3 clinical trial so in, compared to phase 1 and phase yeah. 2 so in clinical development you have different phases diba when you talk about human clinical trials you have phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 so in phase 1 you start with a few subjects you look at the safety and you look at um, the immunogenicity meaning nagko-cause ba to ng immune response in a small patient, healthy patients. Phase two, you bring, you give the, the vaccine to more people. Um, and again, see, looking at the safety and looking at the dose, um, ilang injections may bibigay natin, how often do you give these things? So these are the things that you study. Phase three is the big clinical trials, thousands of people, tens of thousands. And this is where you look at really the efficacy. So you give people some of the, uh, some people the vaccine, you give some people another vaccine or a placebo. And at the end of maybe two months, three months, four months, you look at the number of cases and you see whether it's effective or not. So it sounds, I mean, it's, it sounds easy and simple and sounds very straightforward, but the reality is it's, it's complicated and it's, tough and it's resource intensive and it's expensive okay i think the next question is also related to the other let me just read it for the sake na mm. mabasa yung question bakit po ginagawang guinea pigs yung mga pilipino na mga multinational companies is it really safe we heard that there are trials for here we are very concerned so i i understand the concern but i think what's happening here is like in most countries, everything is politicized, diba? Um, 
the the term used na guinea pigs actually i've been a clinical trial participant in many studies i volunteered because i i i like to help science evolve diba we should not think of it as something that we are used as guinea pigs because we are not this is how science is done um do we want to get a vaccine that we actually have not tested in our population kasi these vaccines or drugs need to be tested in humans diba and they're usually tested in in the US as well or Europe and they're not thinking that they're guinea pigs diba kasi this is how science evolves and then the other thing that i want to say is um it's it's really good actually that a study is done in your country kasi usually these big companies when a study is done in your country they prioritize you once the drug or vaccine is um, available kasi nga they have this ethical responsibility to prioritize you kasi they used you as uh, participants in the trials so i think um, the mentality here has to sort of change kasi um, when you say oh you're used as guinea pigs or participants of course it's a negative uh, connotation diba mm-hmm. but this but this is really how science works right we need people to volunteer and these people who volunteer they volunteer hindi yan pinipilit and you sign mm-hmm. an informed consent and people explain to you what will happen what are the risks what are the benefits because everything in life has risks diba but if you join mm-hmm. a clinical trial of course there is uncertainty but it's up to you because it's it's a benefit risk assessment no I have okay. joined so I under- many, many trials. Right, right. So I understand the man yung ano, like for like say for some clinical trials, if there's a patient basically who's no longer responding to some current medicines, so you want to join that trial of a new medicine if it's going to be at least as good as the standard drug or even better. So in a way, you are joining a clinical trial but you're not really treated as a guinea pig, correct? Exactly, exactly. The other thing is, uh, I I heard uh, I think so in other countries, if you participate uh, in a clinical trial, you can sometimes get some form of monetary benefit, especially if you'll be in the placebo group. Is there such thing as uh, people may get benefits, whether monetary or non-monetary, by joining clinical trials? So sir it's not just the placebo it's actually everyone you you get a monetary compensation for your time kasi syempre you go to the study site you lose for example if you're if you're working somewhere and you cannot go to work they have to compensate you for that diba mm-hmm. um to give you an example um when we were doing trials in South Africa um you you give the mothers money for their time and also mm-hmm. we give them food we give them you know food for the baby so so there are other things that you can get from joining a clinical trial of course so do you expect na yung mga if Russia will actually uh, get participants here in the Philippines they will get some form of compensation or siguro will be ahead of the um, access na not- siguro sa So this has also to be balanced kasi diba ethically um the ethics committee will not allow it if you're paying them for example say oh 10,000 just for a day to attend the clinical trials no it's not like that it's it's just the uh, what is um considered sufficient in that particular country na pambayad for for the day mm. that you were out you were not able to work yeah mm. okay here's another question how long po does it take you to study a foreign language to be conversational how do you learn them po i'm interested po kasi in foreign languages then but it takes so long to learn just one language well firstly you have to like it secondly um you will improve really when you're using it daily so it's practice 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 talaga so like for for us for example sa italy when we were um, in this italian um language class Siyempre, mahirap talaga, di ba? And you're not using it. And you also speak to your classmates in English. So, wala talaga. Hindi ka talaga matututo. Pero when we started speaking to the patients, wala kang choice. So, kumbaga talaga, mm-hmm. you have to learn it. So, were they practice. Initi- really practice. <laughs> were they initially laughing at you, you know, the, the Italian patients when you were speaking in broken Italian or hindi naman? Sir, they were too polite. I, I, I think they really appreciate it. To see that you're trying to speak Italian. Oh, great, great. 
So there's another question here. Do you see yourself growing old in vaccinology and why? I guess uh, the more political, uh, I guess, uh, appropriate thing to say, do, do, will you be retiring in vaccinology? Well, I, ho I hope so. It, it, seems, it seems like a field that's interesting enough for me na hindi ako mabubor. And it seems like it's in line with my ikigai. It's something that I'm good at. It's something that I like. It's something that the world needs and it's something that I can be paid for. So I think, yes. Okay, I think uh, there's more questions here. How do we join the Digital Health Group of WHO? Mahilig po kami sa Facebook. Well, um, yung Digital Health Group ng WHO, hindi lang naman siya Facebook, no? It's a, it's a many, many digital solutions. Like I've said, pwedeng uh, management of supplies in a remote uh, clinical trial or or reminding you to go back to your doctor for appointment. So it's 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 uh, it's varied. So, But you can check sa WHO. You can just Google. You can say WHO. Google, mm -hmm. WHO Digital Health, and you can see more information about what the group is doing and how you can be involved. Okay, the next question is, when the vaccine is ready and given up, how long does it take for to feel the effect nationally and globally? Uh -huh. What will, will it be the same for like pre-COVID? era after the vaccine measure, I think major difficult question. <laughs> yes, so. but I can tell you that the answer here will depend on two things. First, the efficacy of the vaccine. Secondly, how many people are actually getting the vaccine? Because the ideal situation is a vaccine that's 100% and everyone gets it. But we know that this will never happen. Mm. <laughs> and the pinakapangit na situation is only 50% of the world gets it, and let's say the vaccine efficacy is 30%, mm. right? There will be an effect, but it will depend on these two things. Because even if you say only 30% gets the vaccine, uh, the vaccine efficacy is only 30%, but let's say half of the world gets it, you will still stop the outbreaks. Because there are people who are protected, and there are those who have been infected and recovered, na, diba? So you, you will see um, a difference. But... It will not be like before the pre-COVID if we have only 30% efficacy and 50% uh, mm -hmm. uptake. So it depends on these two things, Talaga. Okay, thank you. I think uh, there's another question here. Uh, is the head of WHO extremely political? Word palakasan ng mga countries. Uh, what is your insider well, information? <laughs> no, it's, it's not even insider, Doc Jun, because... To be a head of WHO, you have to be voted by the countries. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the number of countries that support you. So it's, it's, there's politics. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's politics. So next question is, uh, we are worried that the Philippines may be one of the last to receive vaccines because President Duterte didn't want to prepay. I'm hoping this is not true. I, I ah, think that yeah. uh, sa balita na in yes. order to get the vaccine first, kailangan mag down payment. Sinabi yata yani presidential spokesman uh, Harry Roque na ayaw ni Duterte yes. sa Western countries because they're asking for down payment. But to clarify, sir, there is now this facility, it's called COVAX facility, COVID vaccine facility that's headed by the WHO, Gavi, and many other supranational organizations. And really, the, um, the aim here is to distribute the vaccines to countries that need it, really. Um, mm -hmm. And which means na, kung mas madami kayong um, cases doon at mas madaming namamatay, syempre ipaprioritize kayo, di ba? If your country is doing mm -hmm. well, let's say you're New Zealand, you don't get the vaccine, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and the good thing about this is I think over 170 countries now have, have signed in this. So they are basically saying that we agree that the WHO will use their expertise to allocate the vaccines. So I, I am hopeful that this will be successful. And I think the only country that did not sign COVAX facility is U.S. So even China okay. signed last week. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next question, is it true that the government needs to pay for Filipinos to be participants in the trial? No, so your question I mean, is the government, the government needs, needs to, to pay who? Like the company? No, it doesn't work that way. So 
in a study, the, the company actually uh, applies to, ha to do their studies in the country. And then um, once they're given the um, go signal to have the, the study, you recruit participants and you pay them according to yung, yung hassle nila sa buhay, di ba? Kasi mm -hmm. hindi sila nakapasok ng trabaho. Mm -hmm. They're paid 500 a day. You give them 500 kasi hindi sila nakapasok ng trabaho, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I guess next question, uh, away from vaccine, how often do you see your family po? Uh, well, now, nowadays, every day I call my mom. <laughs> but if you, if you talk about face to face, um, we were planning, I was planning to bring them here in Switzerland this year, but COVID happened. So, mm -hmm. so ito, uh, I guess, how to be you, Doc Melvin? <laughs> you want to answer the question? <laughs> well, I guess, okay, so maybe um, one thing is just do what you really like to do. Um, find your passion and do it. And nung nagsastart ako ng career ko, affected din ako sa what people say. Diba? When people say, don't do this, you're just like this, wala kang ganito. You know, I mean, it, it's normal for us to be affected with these things and these comments. And some of them are comments na um, actually they care about you, that's why they say these things. But there are comments that are not like that. They're just there to demean you. But maybe, siguro with age, you also, I mean, wala nang pakailam sa sabihin nyo. Do what you want. Because at the end of the day, it's your life. Okay. Uh, I think somebody wanted you to compare yung how do the opportunities in Asia, Europe, and the U.S. compare as far as your salary is concerned, mm -hmm. health, uh, work-life balance, mm -hmm. benefits, working relations. Is there any differences as far as, I guess I prefer, like you would say, mas preferred ko sa Europe, eh, mal okay yung salary, or I have mm -hmm. more time to travel versus like Asia or America mm -hmm. or Latin America? Well, I, I think, sir, um, if you talk about uh, salaries, I think the highest is U.S. talaga. Walang tatalo sa U.S. Mm -hmm. Pinakamalaking sweldo. And I'm sure you've mm -hmm. experienced that as well, sir, di ba? Pero mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's also different because of the language, di ba? Kasi for us, mm -hmm. na Pilipinas, we're always thinking of the U.S. U.S.-centric yung mind natin, eh. Mm -hmm. Kasi yun ang madali for us to go in, di ba? Um, Work-life balance. Of course, the best is Europe because Europe is always like, um, pag weekends, do not bother me at work. Diba? No work-related things on the weekend. And sa US, hindi ganyan yan eh. Diba? <laughs> um, sa Asia naman, in Singapore, it depends rin on the company. But I would say that um, Singapore is sort of like US na work, work, work. You know, work, work, work ang isip lagi. And in Europe talaga is more um, dolce vita, you know. <laughs> It's, uh, mm. it's living the good life. That's mm. actually why I like it here. Right. Okay. Uh, I, okay, there's another question here. Uh, ano pa ba schedule ng COVID ba? Ano po ba ang schedule ng COVID vaccine? Marami mm. din po dapat uh, like hepatitis B and how long ang protection. I, I'm not sure if we have the answers yet, right? No, it depends on the, on the vaccine kasi there are vaccine candidates that need two doses. There are there are those that teach three. There, um, ang yung J and J. I think they only need one. Um, but again, this will all depend on the phase three trials. Because if they if they work or not, we will only know, diba? And in terms of yung how long will the protection last? Um, this is another thing that we still don't know. Because we are seeing now people who are reinfected. So we need to we need to understand whether natural infection actually um, how long is the protection. And is the vaccine protection better than natural um, infection? So these things uh, are still out there and are still being studied. I will say na siguro um, early next year or middle of next year, this th these things will be more clear to us. Okay. Uh, what is your opinion on convalescent antibodies being used? What is the data out there? Um, ito kasi, sir, um, previously... Uh, working in Africa for Ebola, diba? we know that this works. The problem with the convalescent plasma is how do you um, make sure that you um, you have the same amount and quality of antibodies? Because we, we people create different amounts and qualities of antibodies. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason, I think, where why some of the trials are not looking so good because it's hard to standardize the eh, mm -hmm. 
quality and amount of antibody. But technically, it does work. It makes sense. So that's why it's important, I think, to have the monoclonal antibodies because this one, you can create the antibodies that you want and you can actually mm-hmm. make sure that they standardize. So, mm-hmm. uh, Regeneron, for example, the yung binigay kay Trump, di ba? So, mm-hmm. these are monoclonal antibodies that you can sort of standardize. Got it. Okay. Do you need MLE to work in Europe? Uh, I think that... I, no. no it's a, if you want to work in the US as a doctor, you need it. But in Europe, they have different systems per country. So in the UK, they have a different one. In, in Italy, they have a different one. In you know, Switzerland, they have a different one. Yeah, I think maybe na confused lang siguro yung the person who asked na US MLE is only for US. So this one is, please explain po yung reinfection. We are worried about some uh, reports mm-hmm. that uh, nagkakari infection in that nagkakari yes. COVID-19. So now we've seen evidence that reinfection is possible, right? Because we've now seen at least 40 cases, I think, case studies of people who've been infected, gumaling, negative RT-PCR, and then naging positive ulit. Um, mm-hmm. So this is concerning, that's true. Pero actually, it's not something that's surprising kasi if you look at the other coronaviruses, yung non-pandemic coronaviruses, di ba? Yung hindi yung SARS, hindi yung MERS, kundi yung um, um, yung OC43, HKU1, you know, yung mga hindi sikat na coronavirus, no, you can no, actually no. be infected. So it makes sense no. that if this coronavirus can reinfect, this no. one can also reinfect, di ba? But the question is, is it really uh, making things serious, the second infection. I say out of these 40 plus cases na documented, I think two of them became serious, but most of the cases actually were mild the second time. Mm. Okay. So, I think I've, okay, I have a question just flashed. Do you, I guess, very personal naman to, from vaccine, we talk about uh, you in person. Do you cook Filipino food? What's your favorite food after traveling the world? So yeah, I I try to cook. Ang ang pinaka gusto ko siempre pinaka madali adobo, di ba? Kasi adobo is pinoy and uh, madali maganap ng ano yun eh, ng ingredients na for adobo. Um, um, and I actually try to go to Milan every end of the month before wow. COVID to eat Jollibee. To eat Jollibee, Jollibee kasi may Jollibee. Okay. Uh, um, what's your favorite food after traveling the world? Mahirap yan eh, kasi marami talagang masasarap na pagkain and uh, mm. yeah mahirap mahirap yung tanong <laughs> so kung if you just travel from Zurich to Milan just to get a taste of Jollibee how long is the train ride like uh, 6 it's hours? Three hours 3 hours and uh, 20 minutes so from Zurich station I arrive in the Milan train station and then I walk for 15 minutes and yung Jollibee kasi malapit lang siya sa Duomo so you know you visit mm. the Duomo I go yes. to mass. I hear mass there in Italian, and after that, I go to Jollibee. Take away ako ng mm-hmm. uh, chicken joy, dalawang buckets, balik sa Zurich. Uh-huh. Ah, hindi ka na nag shopping sa Galleria. No, I'm not, I don't like shopping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So here, what's the best place vacation for Europe? So I guess usapang travel naman tayo. What's the best place vacation in Europe? In your Depend- opinion, sa ano gusto mo, di ba? Kasi the different countries have different things to offer. If you like food, I would say, you know, you go to um, France and Italy because they have uh, the best, I, in my opinion, or actually even Portugal. I, I love the food in Portugal. Um, if you like uh, history, actually Rome. Rome is the place for history because lahat ng bagay may dito dito umihi si ganyan dito namatay si ganyan alam mo yon parang Rome is that place for history if you want let's say um, beer Czech Republic mm-hmm. or or Germany so it it really depends on what you want to do and what you want to experience so i think uh, religion and history maybe Rome yes, food Rome. i guess food would be Rome to culture maybe France France, yeah, France. Wine, you can go to the wine region in, in, in France. Or you can go to Tuscany, also a good wine. But um, you can also go to the Riesling area in Germany if you want, want white wine. So, so de- de- depende sa gusto mo talaga. Okay. Aren't you afraid to ride a plane po ngayon? Kasi dahil because of the COVID. Have you actually tra- tra- been traveling around? Uh, yes, I actually I just, I just, from Poland. 
Um, and I try to to travel less. So ngayon, I travel only once a month by plane. Kasi syempre, again, if you travel more, you increase your risk, diba? But mm-hmm. you know, the good thing about the, the airplanes here, very strict talaga. So you wear mask the whole time. You only remove your mask when you drink or eat something. And um, as much as possible, you don't sit with someone beside you. Talagang nilagyan nila ng, ng vacant seat. And then, uh, one thing that I also did not know before, actually, must safe sa airplane because the air exchanges mm-hmm. in the airplane are actually more frequent than the air exchanges in offices. So if you think about, um, if you just compare the air exchanges, mm-hmm. must frequent sa airplane. So actually, must safe siya. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. And the the capacity siguro for passengers is less than 50%. Um it depends din sir kung saan ka pupunta kasi nung pumunta akong Poland last 2 weeks ago I I had no neighbors, diba? Parang the whole row is mm. mine. Pero nung pumunta ako ng Frankfurt, oh, I got puno kasi ang daming pumunta sa Frankfurt. So mm. So I hear an, uh, from another fan. Thanks and more power Doc Melvin, you make us proud. Thank you. Okay. So I guess it's pang usapang travel. I'm sure as a frequent traveler, you have uh, uh, places in your bucket list. So ano mga napuntahan mo na sa bucket list mo and which ones would you like to go after the pandemic? So ang ang gusto kong puntahan mo or na hindi ko napuntahan is maybe more countries in Latin America and more countries in Africa. Kasi in Africa, I've only been to South Africa, Morocco, um, Uganda, uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, yun pa lang. So, madami-madami pa kung pwedeng puntaan sa Africa. Okay. okay. Dr. Anna is with us. You have more questions, Dr. Anna, for Dr. Melvin. I think, uh, nakamute ka, Dr. Anna. Yes, you're muted po, ma'am. I was just so interested kasi listening to both of you. Ayan. Saka, ang daming matandang okay. tanong. Doc Melvin. Mm-hmm. So, ako po, eh, um, ito, my question is, have you ever considered to come back to the Philippines as a balik scientist? Kasi kailangan talaga natin. You know, ma'am, um, I've been asked this before and I always say, it, it depends on the on the opportunity, di ba? Kasi, um, mahirap naman niya, I say yes, tapos yung pala, pagdating ko doon, wala namang opportunity for me, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, yes, of course, why not? Um, Dr. Melvin, what would your advice be for a somebody who's young and then um, seeking to be a researcher? Is is there a is there a future for them in the Philippines or talagang wala or paano po? What's your advice? And um, kasi sa Philippines parang we think na eh kahapon lang nagka-insultuhan na po yung DNR at yung mga researchers po sa ano yun, sa UP. So if you don't know, um, natawag po silang bayaran. Mm, okay? Yes. So, um, uh, what, what's, what's the future or what, what advice can you share um, for a future young person na graduating lang from med school na parang asking like, paano, paano, I want to be a researcher. So, um, I, I think, ma'am, um, reality sa atin is we, we have lots of uh, things to improve. No, so it will be better for researchers. Kasi at the moment, talagang madaming challenges. And I know, at least personally, friends of mine who've returned um, to the country, um, and they've regretted their decision, unfortunately, and bumalik sila ulit sa, sa mm. uh, overseas. I also know people who came in and were able to find a, a good job and are now thriving. So again, it depends, I think, on your situation. It depends on also luck, maybe. But I, I have to say that I think if we really want our scientists to come back, um, we have to make it better for them. Because, um, yeah, I, it's, I, I, we, we have the brains, we have, we have the passion, and I think we have some support. But I think it's it's not enough. Tama. Well said. Oh, hmm. well, I should share ko lang yung story ni Doctor June Ruiz kasi baka nahihiya po siya pero ako hindi ako nahihiya. <laughs> so, um, Doctor Melvin, si Doctor June came home po in 2000, and um, like you said, na frustrate po siya. 
and he left again in 2004, but um, returned again because the call of the Philippines was just too much. So, bumalik po siya for the second time. At ngayon, hindi mo na napapayagan na aalis ulit. Wow. So, yan. That's a, that's an inspiring Great. story talaga. Mm. Na, ano, Pia words back then. Try and try until you succeed. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, and, and, and when I go to conferences, ma'am, and, and I meet a lot of uh, of researchers, laging may Pinoy eh. And, and that is the... um the ultimate topic lagi uh, na um, hin, hin, okay si, si, siguro sabihin ng ibang tao na masyado namang diva masyado namang um, madaming hinihingi yung mga Pilipino actually it's not that eh, kasi I think we just want to have a comfortable life di ba na we Oo, want naman. to create a career diba, and if you go back anak. tapos wala naman palang dadatingan um, you know no, but but I, 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 I hope things will change I hope oh. Well, Doc June, I thank you so much for sharing your personal, thank you. personal story, Doc Melvin. Thank you. Doc June, okay ka na? Apati yung story. Yes, I'm good. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Dr. Anna.